Love, Romance, and the Evolutionary Theory of Attraction. Can we, um, can we turn off the... Yeah, that's better. Or actually, just turn it back on, but just lower the volume a little bit. Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> so... From an evolutionary standpoint, humans have been procreating, learning, and evolving to figure out which potential mates are better equipped to provide healthy genes as well as a thriving life for their offspring. The evolutionary theory of attraction helps us understand why we are attracted to certain attributes of the opposite sex, as well as why males and females differ in interests. According to this theory, humans have developed specific preferences when it comes to selecting a sexual partner. It suggests that both males and females are attracted to individuals who will successfully spread and enhance one's genes. Men and women defer in their mating behaviors due to unequal parental investments. Women must be highly selective when choosing a mate because they are biologically limited in the number of offspring they can bear in a lifetime. Because women are more physically at risk when bearing a child, they must be more selective in choosing a mate that will pass on the best possible genes for procreation. On the other hand, men are less selective because they are able to virtually father an unlimited number of children and ensure reproductive success by having multiple sexual relationships at a lower physical risk. Furthermore, this theory suggests that heterosexual men and women search for and are attracted to dissimilar characteristics and a potential mate. Because males' best strategy is to inseminate multiple women, they search for those who are physically attractive as a signal of health and fertility. On the other hand, heterosexual women desire and search for a reliable long-term partner of high professional status because this signifies access to financial resources for their offspring. One study done by Clark and Hartfield in 1989 showed the difference between men and women's sexual desires and needs. This study was performed on the Florida State University campus where male and female confederates, who were actually pickup artists, randomly approached students of the opposite sex and asked them one of three questions. One, how about a date? Two, how about we go to my apartment? And three, how about we go to bed with each other? The results have shown that an equal amount of males and females responded yes to the first question. As questions became more intimate and forward, the responses from both sexes began to depart. When the second question was asked, only 6% of women agreed, while 69% of men agreed to go to the Confederate's apartment. The third question had an even greater difference. 0% of female participants agreed to have sex with a confederate, while 75% of male participants agreed to the generous offer. One interpretation of these results may be that males are more open to casual sex because they face less reproductive risks, while women are more selective when choosing to have sex with someone because they have higher potential risk factors. It is also possible that societal factors have influenced the answers from both sexes. For example, it is more socially acceptable for males to engage in casual sex than females. This theory, however, only accounts for heterosexual males and females. In future studies, I suggest the inclusion of participants from the LGBTQ community. Because this theory pertains to straight individuals spreading their genes, It'd be interesting to learn from another point of view. Uh, change the music for the outro. Thank you. Today we have learned about the evolutionary theory of attraction. It states that the preferences of the opposite sex are hardwired in human behavior from centuries of evolution. Males and females have developed different strategies when it comes to survival and the spreading of one's genes due to unequal parental investments. HDFS 445. 2019. We out. We out. We out.